Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm still catching up with all of the major updates to some of your favorite emulators since my last big recap, and this time we're taking a look at the Xbox emulator, CXBX Reloaded. These last several months have been full of rendering and performance improvements, along with quite a bit of cleanup to this emulator's codebase, so there's a lot of progress to cover. As always, you can find a link to CXBX Reloaded's Patreon and Discord server in the description below, as well as a link to their awesome new website. And of course, while you're down there, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And before you ask, yes I will be taking a look at XMU in another video, but both emulators have made so much progress that I want to keep them separate for now. And with that out of the way, let's jump in. One major update that took quite a bit of time and effort was some refactoring to better handle vertex declarations, which not only cleaned up some of the code immensely, but also affected rendering in many games. Things like intros, menus, and HUDs are now rendering correctly in quite a few titles including Blood Wake, Dead or Alive 3, Bloody Roar Extreme, The Driver Games, and more. Zionite is also now in game thanks to this improvement, and both Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 and Castlevania Curse of Darkness are now rendering graphics in-game, and Blackstone Magic and Steel is now able to progress past the first level. Some later updates to this refactoring also fixed some of the rendering in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 and the shadows in both Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X and NASCAR Heat 2002. Speaking of NASCAR Heat, this game was thoroughly picked apart and used as a reference for some major improvements late last year. As the result of a handful of direct 3D and direct sound improvements, many issues such as the boot crashes, soft locks, muted spotter audio, and several rendering issues have been fixed in this game. Crimson Skies is also now rendering much better as a result of some of these updates, and stability in a few titles such as Alien vs Predator Extinction and the Grand Theft Auto games may be improved as well. Another update which reduced the amount of work done per draw drastically improved performance in NASCAR Heat, as well as in several other games including Crash Nitro Kart and OutRun 2. Removing some hacks which can skip guest resource removal also fixed a crash during races in OutRun 2, as well as a crash in Monster Garage and potentially other games which would crash with the message skipping release of in the debugger. A fix for titles which attempt to pass a surface object to set texture has allowed Midnight Club 3 to render graphics in-game, while also fixing the rain in Grand Theft Auto 3, some of the rendering in Red Dead Revolver, and a few effects in Battle for Bikini Bottom, such as Bloom and some overlays meant to distort the screen. Some improvements to viewport calculations also fix some missing or improperly rendered menus and UI elements in games like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, Mortal Kombat Deception and Armageddon, Driver 3, and Black. A couple of Direct 3D updates have fixed the incorrect rendering and crashing in the menus of World Racing 2, and it's now in-game after another update which defaults to Shader Model 2.A for Vertex shaders rather than 3.0. Burnout 3's menus were also fixed by some improvements to screen space transformation, and some changes to Direct 3D patches have brought this title in-game, while also improving the rendering in other titles such as Kingdom Under Fire and 007 Nightfire. Upscaling now works properly in quite a few titles including Panzer Dragoon Orta, Virtua Cop 3, Shadow of Memories, and Crash Nitro Kart after an update which allows for consistent upscaling of render targets and depth surfaces. Crash Tag Team Racing and Battlestar Galactica also now render correctly when upscaled, and the black screen during races in Crash Tag Team Racing was fixed by an update which ensures that the Xbox viewport is applied under certain conditions. Some anti-aliasing scaling issues were also resolved, allowing Shenmue 2 to properly render to the full screen, although it doesn't render anything besides the HUD outside of wireframe mode on current builds. Resolving these issues also fixed the bullet time graphics in Max Payne 2, making this game much more playable on CXBX Reloaded. Some miscellaneous Direct 3D LTCG fixes resolved startup crashes in several games, including Jade Empire, Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer, Metal Wolf Chaos, and potentially others. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is much more playable now thanks to yet another Direct 3D improvement, which fixed the flickering colors. You can read more about this specific bug fix in Silent, aka Cookie PL Monsters blog, which is linked below. 
Continuing with the rendering progress, some render state improvements have fixed the graphics in The Simpsons Road Rage, and the addition of basic I Am GUI support has fixed the missing text in Galleon. The NBA Live and NCAA March Madness games are also rendering much better now, after an update which allows CXBX Reloaded to use the back buffer format requested by the game. An update which prevents the emulator from attempting to create zero-sized vertex buffers has allowed the SSX games to progress further, although a few graphical issues make them hard to play for now. Fatal Frame or Project Zero 1 and 2 are in-game thanks to an update that fixed incorrect flags in NT Duplicate Object, and both run well, although the camera doesn't function properly. Some pixel combiner fixes allowed for GPU decoding of Bink videos, and between this and some simplification to thread creation logic, the Warriors can now come out to play. The deadlock after the intro movies in Project Gotham Racing has been resolved by a kernel update, although the main menu still doesn't render properly, and there are major issues with the graphics and audio if you can get in-game. In addition to all of these improvements, CXBX Reloaded also got a pretty solid bump to performance by optimizing the Vertex stream cache for partial buffer access. I'll leave a link in the description to a video showcasing several games, but quite a few titles including Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, Robotech Battlecry, and Roadkill are running substantially better than before. Thanks to this optimization, Blink's The Time Sweeper is also now in-game but far from playable and some further Vertex cache improvements gave Group S Challenge a pretty substantial boost to performance as well. Support for both the arcade joystick and the Steel Battalion controller have been added, although it's worth mentioning that Steel Battalion is still a ways from being playable. Mouse and keyboard support was added to CXBX Reloaded as well, along with a mode which reports the mouse input state as the cursor position relative to the rendering window. Using this mode prevents the automatic recentering of both the crosshair in Virtua Cop 3 and the sticks in Steel Battalion, making them much more playable with a mouse. And that just about covers all of the major updates to CXBX Reloaded since my last recap. If you noticed that I missed anything important, be sure to leave a comment below so that it doesn't get left out. Like I mentioned before, the devs have been very busy over the last several months, and there have been a lot of additional improvements to accuracy and the code base in general, so I feel like I'm only scratching the surface in this video. Needless to say, if it's been a while since you've played around with CXBX Reloaded, it's definitely worth checking out and seeing if your games are running better after all of this progress. There's still plenty to talk about in terms of Xbox emulation, and like I mentioned, I will be taking a look at XMU in another video. So be sure to get subscribed to my channel if you want to see that, as well as other emulation updates and tutorials. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.